Hello, Winnie. Hello, Beatrice. Hey guys, Beatrice is holding her dad's hand and taking a few steps, but not yet walking on her own. So the challenge continues. Feel free to uh, do that challenge. Wait a minute, what's this? I have a text. You guys know I use my phone to open the box. Hold on. <laughs> of course. Only Mr. Skyra would figure out a way to break in to the garage using, uh, I don't know, how did you do it? Well, I used the power of computing, of course. <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Geiger, nice to see you. How are you tonight? Good, how are you tonight? Well enough, well enough. Um, Welcome we, to the garage. It's lovely, I've been watching every episode, actually. Thank you, uh, thank you. Very uh, informative, entertaining. Thank you. Uh, we're doing okay here in the uh, Scarra household. Uh, Good. Like the Berkeley High students, my children are uh, doing their schoolwork remotely. Uh, yeah. To keep safe and all that. Right, right, right. So I'm, I'm fortunate that I get to go out and run occasionally. But um, yeah, we're just like everyone else in New Jersey, doing our best uh, to keep working remotely. So when you're, when you're running, because I know maybe not everybody knows, but you are a marathoner. And when you're running with uh, people now, are you running with people now or are you going solo? A uh, combination. Um, what we do in my group is it's now down to groups of two or three at most. I see. And frankly, we do our very best to keep that spacing uh, just to be as safe as we can. Of so, course, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, it's down, but again, safety being the most important part. Right, right. Uh, which kind of re re brings me to the reason why I uh, texted you today. Um, one of the reasons I wanted to talk was to remind our students about um, having these devices in their homes and it's really important to be extra special careful with them because the tech dojo isn't available to them right uh, like it usually is every day right so uh, I prepared a little movie I hope uh, it's amusing as well as informative uh, for the students to watch and maybe you can watch the one with them this is a movie yeah, a quick one, just a couple of minutes. Okay. Um, all right, we'll figure out how to put that into the, into the scene. Um, let me go do that now. Hang on. As we get a bit further into remote learning, I'd like to remind you about some iPads do's and don'ts while you're at home. I'm Mike Scarra, technology coordinator. Do plug it in each night to make sure it's fully charged for the morning. Don't use your iPad as a cutting board. Do use it to check your school email each day to ensure you're on top of messages from your teachers. Don't get angry with the iPad if something isn't working properly. A better bet is to restart the iPad or check your home Wi-Fi. Do use your iPad sitting at a standard chair using the stand given to you which will keep the iPad at an ergonomically correct 45 degree angle. Not using the stand can lead to stress on the back, neck, and shoulders. Don't use it to play frisbee. Do use Google Classroom to keep track of the majority of your assignments. Don't use your iPad as a mirror for putting on makeup or shaving. Do Put in earbuds whenever possible so you don't disturb those around you. Do expand your mind beyond the normal schoolwork by listening to a TED Talk. Do use it to recreate your favorite sports movie. Do 
do watch instructional drills that you can do by yourself in your favorite sport. Then you can go outside and practice them on your own. In fact, that might be the best advice after your schoolwork is done for the day. Do go out and go for a walk. So that, that really was excellent. Um, and a little humorous as well. Let's hear what Mr. Scarra has to say about this, uh, his latest creation. I know Mr. Scarra, you still there? Yes, Mr. Geiger, thank you. So um, I've seen quite a bit of your work and I know you do an enormous amount of um, professional development with the teachers and you make films and help devices and all kinds of things. Uh, this one obviously was um, with some humor in it. I would hope you would, you would think so. Well, that was kind of the point. Um... Obviously, the don'ts are not things that our students would normally do. Obviously, uh, they were they weren't they were meant to be outlandish and outrageous. So, what do you think is the most outlandish don't that you had on the film? Oh, certainly chopping vegetables. Oh, so, that's interesting you to bring that up because I've been working um, with some old barn wood, some antique barn wood oak, and uh, I actually am working on making these. I think they're called actually charcuterie boards. Um, for chopping meats and vegetables and things like that, or displaying meats and vegetables and cheeses, you would recommend this rather than an iPad to chop? For sure. Uh, you want to treat your iPad a little more respect than you would a piece of wood. Yes, of course. I thought it was awesome, the scene about um, playing Frisbee with the iPad. Again, not something you do, but something that's, you that's don't. A big don't. That's a big don't. This, obviously, um, I didn't actually throw it. Uh, that was a little movie uh, trickery. Um, obviously, I couldn't be throwing it to myself either. Right, right. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, those are meant to be funny. Uh, please don't do any of those don'ts. So, you know, I think you're right about a couple of things. I, I think the most um, egregious thing that can happen at home with an iPad is frustration. Um, what are you, what's your recommendation for a student who just feels like it's not working up to par? Well, the first thing would be to restart the iPad or... Uh, make sure you're close enough to your uh, home access point to make sure you're on a good Wi-Fi connection. And if all else fails, please put in a tech request. Uh, the link is right off the district website. Uh, the team and I, in fact, uh, the technology team has really been extraordinarily responsive, very, very fast to, to uh, resolve issues. And we want to resolve as quickly as possible. So if the restart and the Wi-Fi isn't the thing, then please put in a ticket and we'll do our best to assist. And just to clarify, this is the bhpsnj.org. This isn't the Columbia main page, but the main district site has a, a huge link on the bottom of it. That's correct. It's about the third thing down. Right. Uh, and, okay. But any, you don't need to log in. The, a parent could enter a piece of information, a student, um, anyone. Uh, we just ask you to put in some contact information so we don't have to then look it up. Okay. And uh, how are your tech people doing? They're all well, I hope? Yeah, we uh, text each other constantly, frankly. Um, the repartee is still there. Um, like I said, they're really on top of any tech request that comes in. Um, I'll take a phone call from, uh, from a teacher, and by the time uh, I'll check back, you know, two, three minutes later, uh, a staff member, one of my uh, staff members, has already written, oh, I'm on this one, oh, I'm on this one. That's so, awesome. Uh, they're, they're so good. I'm so happy to have them. And uh, frankly, um, they haven't come up yet with a problem uh, that they weren't right on top of. So it's really terrific. So just, you know, thinking um, in other, other occasions with the um, Chromebooks down in the elementary schools, in case anybody's watching from, uh, you know, 5, 4, 3, 2, um, again, same thing, begin by re just trying to restart, restart the device. Absolutely. Uh, anytime you restart the device, uh, it's always going to have the best opportunity for, uh, for good um, performance. Again, um, Wi-Fi, I mean, we're all on it at the house. I mean, I'm fortunate I have a nice family. Um, but if you have a house that, you know, you may not have the greatest Wi-Fi or there's a dead zone, uh, it's easy to forget where those dead zones are until, you know, something drops out. Right. Um, so, yeah, close to the access point and restart the device, and worst case, uh, please contact your, uh, your your technicians. And that can be, you know, um, can't log into my Google, um, you know, uh, my math space isn't working, really anything 
that our, uh, our instructors are asking our students to do, uh, we're kind of the behind the scenes, let's make sure everything works. Cool. Uh, guy staff. Awesome. Thanks so much. Any, any uh, final remarks? Well, um, no, just that my beard is getting more gray and uh, I want to see the students and the teachers again. Uh, so I'm looking forward to uh, when we all can get back together and uh, get back to normal. You know, it's, it's interesting you say that because Philippe, everybody knows Dr. Phil from the middle school. He uh, actually contacted me today and he said, the next time someone shares a small video with you, can you forward it to me? He said, I won't put it anywhere or take it anywhere but I miss the kids. I miss seeing their faces. And it is getting to that point now where we are like, you know, we're a little homesick for being at school. Well, I really think that's one of the reasons why we all kind of got into education to uh, see our charges improve over time. And uh, we get to share in uh, how they grow. And it kind of gives us a little feeling of, hey, I, I helped to do that. So uh, the community you know, uh, bringing everybody up together, um, it really uh, is lacking when you're not in or around them. I couldn't agree more. Thank you so much for being here tonight. Have a good night, Mr. Geiger. All right, take care. That was great, and it gave me an excuse to show off my latest project here. Um, I took an old board from uh, an old barn. I believe this, this oak wood actually came from a uh, barn in Pennsylvania. There's a company in Irvington, New Jersey, that uh, sells used barn wood, and they do a couple of critical things before they let you buy the wood. The most important thing is they put it in a kiln. Now, believe me, this wood is hard as a rock, but a lot of old wood, if you want to build with it, even though it is already technically dry, which all wood should be before you build with it, um, they put it in the kiln again, not just to bring the moisture level down, but to make sure that if there's any bugs or, or insect eggs inside the wood, that it, it, it kills all those things so that when you bring your antique wood into the house, you don't get a surprise later and all these little creepy crawlies start coming out of the wood. So that's the first thing they do when they plan on selling old wood. The second thing that they do after it comes out of the kiln is they will run the wood through a... Uh, a metal detector to make sure that there's no nails in the wood. And they do that for our good. Uh, our good meaning that the woodworker doesn't have to deal with nails breaking the saw blade or destroying the um, equipment that we're using when we cut, sand, or shape the wood that we buy from these guys. And um, so I love using hardwood because the finish is incredible but it does take its toll on our machines. So in the, in the shop here, aside from the hand tools that I have, I do have a radial arm saw, um, which I'm gonna demonstrate as we move along here. I have a table saw, which uh, actually is on wheels that I drag out to the uh, driveway because it just makes a ton of sawdust and it's easier to have the sawdust fall on the driveway than it is to have it fall inside the garage. And I have a... Um, a cutoff saw or a crosscut saw, uh, which helps me take a board like this, for example, and very quickly I can cut it into eight in, 18 inch lengths or what have you. And uh, I'm going to demonstrate those things in the coming days as well. We're going to spend a lot more time on tools this week and we're going to be guessing tools as well. So I'm going to end tonight by showing you tonight's what is it tool. And let me just get it off the shelf for a second. So I'm going to send you guys a Google form where you can answer the question, what is it? And I'm going to um, put a title to the uh, tool. I'm going to call it a name, but um, you'll have to tell me actually what the tool is used for. I'm not going to give you the accurate name for the tool, but I will give you the name to remind you of which tool uh, we were working with that night. So tonight's tool is this one. And you can see it has an interesting head on it there. 
it has an interesting handle here. And if we take a look at how long it is, it's 23 inches long. So it's a 23 inch long, I'm gonna call this a weird blade. And I'm gonna leave it at that and I'm gonna leave it up to you guys to tell me what the tool is. And if you can guess what the tool is, if you're the first one to enter into the form, uh, what this tool is, then you will win a prize. And that prize is you will be one of my guests here in the garage on the screen. And we can talk about how you guessed it and to see if you have any questions about any particular tools in the shop that night. Or we'll just have a good time saying hello and uh, have a great conversation. So this is the tool and it's up to you now to guess what is it?